up? My name is Mel. Welcome to Holmes Law. Basically, today I want to answer a question from a few people that I've gotten, you know, quite some emails on how to stop dogging your conduit. Now, basically, for all you, you know, electrical apprentices, this is the way that I was taught, and it's by far the most effective way. And it's kind of like having training wheels, and then, you know, after a while you get experience, you can actually, you know, stop using the method. But it's always good to remember it because there's come times where I've even had to come in and, and use this method because it's very effective, you know, especially when you have multiple bends on one stick of conduit. It helps. I uh, hope it helps you guys as well. So let's go ahead and how to stop dogging your conduit, okay? So basically, you know, you have this EMT, okay? Now, whether it's EMT, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, aluminum rigid has it as well, you know, regular galvanized rigid has it as well. And what it is that I'm talking about, they have like a seam inside of these conduits. In particularly, EMT is very infamous for this. They have like a seam, and if I could get it on video, I will. Now, let me see if I could actually zoom in here. There you go. All right. Now, you see this little seam in there on the bottom. Hold on one second. Now, if you see this, it's right there, okay? That seam right there is going to also, you're going to see it on the outside as well. Now, on the outside, you might have to look for it a little bit, okay? But you will see it. Now, what I like to do is I usually, okay, I'll take a marker. Let me zoom back out. Okay, now that you know where it is, I'll take a marker, okay, I only have a pencil today, and I'll mark that seam on the edge of the conduit, right? Just on this little lip right there, All right? And I don't have a marker today, and I do apologize about that. And then I'll go ahead and by eye, okay, as best as possible, I'll line it right up, and I'll put it right on that top lip right there as well. Okay, now what you want to go ahead and do is transfer that over to the top of your conduit, okay? So basically, you should have a line going straight through and to the lip of this conduit, okay? And then on the other side, where that seam is, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. See, so now you have a, a, a mark here, so you'll know where to mark it, all right? And you're going to go ahead and mark that there as well. Now, if you look at it, only on one where the seam is, usually, almost 99% of the time, okay, this seam, you'll see it. It's kind of like an invisible you know, not too clear line all the way down the conduit, okay? And you'll see it, all right? If you look hard enough, you'll definitely see it. So now you have these two lines down the center of your pipes. You have one here where your seam is, and you want to have one directly on the opposite side of it, okay, on 180 degrees around, right on the other side, okay? So now these two lines helps you, okay, to actually keep your conduit from being dogged when you're doing offsets, three-point saddles, four-point saddles, okay? Now, there's a trick to it, okay? When you're doing an offset, all right, when you're doing an offset, what you want to do is the seam part, okay, which is this one, if you look at it, if you look at it, you'll see that it's kind you see this whole line is lined up with your line. It's kind of like two lines. It's kind of like two lines because that's where the seam is. It's double line. So you pick that, you know, that's the center of, of, of your whole pipe, okay? So basically what you want to do is when you're doing an offset, you want to use that second line second, all right, on your bend, all right? So the first one you want to, the first bend on your offset, you want to do it on the on the side where, excuse me, on the side where the, uh, where the seam isn't, okay? So you'll line up your, your pipe with this, with this mark, because it's going to be a little easier for you, 
Okay, because you're actually gonna have it. Let me put this down. You could actually line up your mark, okay, depending on how you bend it, depending on what kind of bender you have, with the center of this. They'll have an arrow for the client. If you don't have the client bender, you can put this mark here, all right? Just make it the center of the shoe, all right? Also on the front, you have this little arrow here that shows you the center, so you can line up that mark with this arrow here on the client bender. But like I said, if you don't have it, you could always put that mark there, okay? This way you know where the center is, all right? And like I was saying, you wanna actually, you know, make your first bend on the side where the seam isn't, okay? So after you do your first bend, now you're gonna have to push your conduit all the way down, right? For the second bend. And now that mark is gonna be so far away, you ain't gonna be able to see it. But you still have, let me, Zoom in. You still have that seam that's there, all right? And you might not be able to see it here now, but you see that? That's that seam there. And I know that my mark is also going to be there as well, all right? So I've actually rubbed it off, but my mark is there as well. And I'm there as well with the arrow. So it's good to have the second mark, <clears throat> you know, use this, make the second bend where the seam is this way when you push the pipe all the way down, you know, and the mark gets too far for you to actually look at it, you can use that, you know, that seam that's on here, okay? And the same thing goes with three-point saddles, okay? With three-point saddles, like this one here, this is just an example of bent that I've already made. With three-point saddles, what you want to do is, on the first, on your first bend, you want to go ahead and use the seam on the first bend, okay? Because you're going to go ahead and need it again on the last bend. So it's better to use the seam as many times as you can, right? So it makes sense, right? You want, with three-point saddles, you want to go ahead and use the seam for the first bend, okay? And then flip it around. Do your second bend as, as accurate as possible by looking down the actual, you know, the shoe and the pipe. And then lastly, <clears throat> on your third bend, at least you have the seam again to line up with your first bend. Okay, so it helps you from dogging your conduit, you know, a lot more. I mean, it's a lot, it, it's really useful when you're first starting out, okay, and you'll start dogging conduits a lot less. You know, and then after a while, you'll just, you'll just get an eye for it. But then again, you know, sometimes you'll need to use it again. And it comes in handy a lot. You know, I'm telling you, you'll always find this uh, seam in, in these conduits. Okay, and that goes for any size conduit. You'll always see them in there. All right, and you just put a line. You know, this way you could actually sight it down your actual shoe, you know, and the bender, if it's a hand bender. If it's an electric bender or whatnot, you won't need it because you can put a no dog on it, okay? But that actually works as well, too, if you want to put this on and, and use it, you know, on, on larger conduits. It works just as well, okay? If you got a good eye, too, it'll work. But this is the best way to do it, you know, when you're first starting out. You know, it's kind of like training wheels, but not because I still use the method as well, too. All right, just when you're doing offsets and, and three-point saddles and whatnot, use the seam that I've showed you to your advantage, okay? So for offsets, you want to use it on your second bend because that's where you usually dog it. You know, and for three-point saddles, you want to use it on your first and third bends, okay? And leave the second one so that you could actually use it for sight, you know, sighting down the actual, you know, conduit and, and, and hand bender. Now, this way, at least you get two out of three correct, you know what I mean? And, and you know, you, you learn. You learn as you go. But this is the method that I've used always, and, and it's a good method, you know, and, and as you start learning more, you'll, you'll pick up, you'll pick it up. And it gets easier and easier, all right? Now, especially for these hand benders, you know, for Klein, you know, they did really well by putting these arrows on the center mark in the front and in the back as well, okay? It helps because they know where the center is, you know what I mean? So if you don't have that, you like I said, you could always just put that mark there, all right? So this helps. Anyways, guys...
if uh you know if there's any videos out there that you want me to actually you know record or you have any questions please you know hit me up on instagram tiktok you know send me a comment a dm let me know what it is that you want me to explain also i'm starting a new playlist i've started a new playlist on learning how to take the measurements for these specific bends if you're just starting out and you're in school or you just started bending conduit and you just can't quite understand how to take certain measurements for specific bends, you know, send me pictures or video clips or whatever it is that you want to uh, know how to take the measurement of, and I'll go ahead and I'll make a whole video for you explaining how to do it, okay? Now, I do have a few people that are sending me this, so you have to give me some time to get back to you. Now, also, check out my memberships. If you if you join my membership, you get priority as well. You know, um, if you have any questions about that, you know, again, send me a comment. Also, you can catch me on Spotify and Anchor. I'm doing podcasts now as well. Uh, you know, you can hit me up with any questions, like I said. All right. Check me out on my Discord server. I'm on Reddit, Snapchat, you know, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I'm on all social medias. You can always find me out there. I'm always answering questions. Just, uh, you know, reach out. And, yeah, get in contact with me. Also, if you want to support the channel, uh the best way to do it is go to the Amazon Homes Law wish list and, um, <clears throat> you know, support me that way. It's the best way that I, I get as much equipment that I, I need to actually make these videos and make them quality videos at that. Uh, you can also find other ways to support. Just, you know, hit me up, DM me, send me a comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.